This video tutorial from ExoCAD will show you in detail how you plan implant positions with ExoPlan. To start, run the ExoPlan DB application. To set up your case, add a new patient or select an existing patient. You can also add notes to the case. These notes will be contained in the approved planning report at the end. Now, select the first tooth you consider for your planning. Next, choose the corresponding restoration type. Choose Implant Planning for teeth you want to plan implants for, but the final restoration is not decided yet. In all other cases, choose a restoration or tooth type. Let's select Implant Planning and a material for the restoration. The selected material, however, is not relevant for the planning. Finally, choose one of the available implant types. This type can still be changed within the planning. If you choose no implant, you will have to decide the final type within the workflow later. Let's choose a custom or stock abutment. Changing any other settings is not required. Now, we define the remaining teeth with the same settings. Use the hotkeys to quickly copy the last settings on the remaining teeth. Before you can start the implant planning, you must save your project. To see where your project was saved, show the folder in the Explorer. Now you are ready to start the planning. Click Implant Planning. This will launch ExoPlan with the defined project. After ExoPlan is started with a defined project, you are prompted to load certain meshes depending on your project definition. These meshes are not mandatory for the planning. For this tutorial case, we load the requested jaw scan mesh. The first step in the planning process is to load the CT or CBCT dataset of the patient. This dataset is mandatory. Ensure to select the correct study and series by comparing them with the patient name in the CT data selection dialog. After you have loaded the relevant datasets, they are displayed in the main view. You start the planning in wizard mode. The wizard control in the lower left corner will guide you through the workflow. In the upper left corner, you see the group selector where you can show or hide scene objects or change their transparency. In the DICOM control, you can adjust the visualization of the loaded CT dataset. For example, you can adjust the surface threshold, switch between different visualization modes, or clip the dataset.
On the right, you see the main toolbar with additional options. For example, showing or hiding the group selector or the DICOM control, or opening the user manual with further information. We are now ready to proceed in the workflow by clicking Next in the wizard control. In this step, we define reference values for soft tissue, bone structures, and enamel. These values are used for visualization purposes later. Drag the slider to a value where the updated surface visualization resembles best the corresponding tissue type. For each tissue type, click the corresponding button to save the currently set value for this type. To replace a saved value, click the corresponding Clear button, change the slider value, and click the Tissue Type button again. In the DICOM control, you can quickly switch between the surface types by clicking the corresponding button. Proceed to the next wizard step. In this step, you define the patient's axial and view direction. These directions are used for camera adjustments and influence the panoramic view generation later. Drag one of the handles to adjust the directions or the height of the CT data clipping plane. You can undo your adjustments by clicking the Reset button. Normally, both directions should be correctly aligned to the CT scanner device axes. To check whether our patient was aligned correctly, switch to Bone Visualization. Adjust the view so that you have a sagittal view on the patient. As you can see at the direction of the upper spines compared to the lower spines, the head of the patient was slightly tilted backwards. Thus, drag the handle for the axial direction until it is aligned to the direction of the upper spines. The patient's view direction is correct and does not need to be adjusted. Proceed to the next step. The next step is the CT data alignment, which aligns the CT data set to the jaw scan. Thus, this step only appears in the workflow if you have loaded a jaw scan. You can also load an additional CT alignment object using the Tools menu. Switch to Expert mode and choose Add Remove Mesh from the Tools menu. Select CT Alignment Object from the Mesh Type list and load the corresponding mesh. For our demo case, we will just use the already loaded jaw scan and return to Wizard mode. The alignment consists of two consecutive steps, Three Point Alignment and Best Fit Alignment. First, the screen is split in two halves. On the right, you see the object the CT dataset should be aligned to, in our case, the jaw scan. On the left side, you see the CT dataset. Before starting the three point alignment, ensure that tooth parts of the jaw scan are also visible in the CT surface visualization. By default, the bone threshold value is automatically selected. However, you can adjust the threshold if necessary. Set three pairs of points, each pair consisting of one point on the CT dataset and one corresponding point on the jaw scan. These points should not be collinear aligned and not too close to each other. You can adjust the point positions in both views by dragging the points. When clicking Clear Markers, all points will be deleted and the point placement starts from the beginning. Once you have finished positioning the points, start the three-point alignment by clicking the corresponding button. 
When the three-point alignment is finished, both views are synchronized and the CT dataset is roughly aligned to the JAW scan. If the three-point alignment is not acceptable, you can discard it and revise the point definition. Otherwise, start the best fit alignment. Once the best fit alignment is finished, the alignment quality can be assessed by the color scale in the wizard and the colored jaw scan. Blue means a low deviation between the jaw scan and the CT dataset. Red means a high deviation. You may ignore high deviations on the jaw scan for gingiva parts or cone beam hardening artifacts. However, anatomical parts that are resembled well in both datasets should be displayed in blue to ensure an acceptable alignment. You can discard the complete alignment or the last best fit alignment. If you undo the last best fit alignment, you can improve the alignment accuracy by using two tools in the second tab. With the cropping tool, you can remove disturbing or unrelated mesh parts from the extracted CT mesh. In general, it is sufficient to work with the straight through option and to draw 2D shapes over the parts to remove. Alternatively, or in combination with the cropping tool, you can use the feature marking tool. Using this tool, you can mark areas on the alignment object that should exclusively be considered in best fit alignment. For best results, mark only those regions that are also well contained in the extracted CT mesh. Once you have finished your adjustments, you can start the best fit alignment again. The accuracy can also be improved by performing additional best fit alignments based on a different surface threshold. Change the slider in the DICOM control and choose one of the options. Before you proceed in the workflow, you must evaluate the alignment result. The selected evaluation option influences the planning result files. When choosing the first option, the result files will include object positions relative to the CT data and to the alignment object. When choosing the second option, the result files will only include object positions relative to the CT data. Choosing the third option returns you to the alignment step. We evaluate the alignment as acceptable and proceed in the workflow. In this step, you define the panoramic curve. It is used to generate the panoramic view and some 2D secondary views later. In the upper part, the axial view of the CT dataset is shown with labels indicating its orientation. In the axial view, the predefined orange curve with labels indicating the clockwise direction is displayed. The curve is enclosed by a fixed yellow margin. Only parts of the CT dataset within this margin are used to generate the panoramic view. You can slice along the axial view by scrolling the mouse wheel. In the bottom part, the automatically updated panoramic view is shown. The orange line with its red and green points indicates position and orientation of the curve within the CT dataset. To adjust the panoramic curve, set the view to the slice position in the jaw where the implants should be placed. Move the complete curve to an appropriate position by dragging the center point. Then, adjust the control points so that the curve shape follows the center line of the patient's jaw ridge. Add control points by clicking on the curve. To delete a point, right-click it while holding the left mouse button. To enhance the contrast in the panoramic view, you can adjust the noise threshold in the wizard control. Furthermore, you can reset the curve to its initial shape, 
flip the perspective of the view, and undo or redo control point adjustments. Proceed to the next step. In this step, you define the mandibular nerve canals. This step is only available when planning implants for tooth numbers in the immediate vicinity of the mandibular nerve. The defined nerve canals will be used as collision objects during implant placement. By default, a focused view layout is used to define the canals. It consists of the curved view, the main view, and the panoramic cut view. The curved view is based on the panoramic curve and can be moved perpendicular to it. Move the mouse wheel to resize the view. To move the view, hold the right mouse button and move the mouse left and right. Clicking in the main view positions the curve view with respect to the curve. To pan the view, hold the middle mouse button and move the mouse. You can also overlay the view with the jaw scan, for example, to additionally assess the CT alignment. To enhance the contrast of the cut views, open the settings in the DICOM control. Drag the upper or lower bound slider of the CT data window to adjust the contrast. Alternatively, you can press Shift or Control while moving the mouse to change the width and center, respectively, of the CT data window. For our demo case, we must define the right and left nerve canal because planned implants close to the right and left nerve exist. Let's start with the right canal by adjusting the curve view to the mental foramen of the right nerve. Define the center line of the canal by setting control points in the curve view in the center of the canal. Move the curve view slightly dorsal along the panoramic curve. Set a new control point and move the curve view again. Repeat these steps until the center line is completely defined. Each time a control point is set, the generated hull mesh is updated in the main view. You can also set control points in other secondary views, for example, in the panoramic cut view. Adjusting the control points is also possible in all open secondary views. Once the center line is defined, adjust the diameter of the canal by dragging the corresponding slider. This diameter will be used for both canals. Check the diameter size by slicing through the CT dataset. Hover the mouse over the diameter slider and check if the canal is enclosed by the outline. For the second canal, we use a hotkey that helps us setting the control points. Activate the left nerve and adjust the curve cut view to the left mental foramen. After the first control point is set, hold the Shift key and set the second point. This moves the curved cut view automatically stepwise with a small but fixed increment dorsal along the panoramic curve. As for the right canal, we check if the adjusted diameter encloses also the left canal. To discard a canal definition, click one of the corresponding clear buttons. You can also lock the control points to avoid unintended changes in your canal definition. Undoing, redoing actions for the last control point are also possible for the selected nerve. Proceed to the next wizard step.
In this step, you can initially place model teeth for backward planning. You can skip this step by clicking Next, for example, if you want to load a wax up later. In the wizard control, you see the bridge for which model teeth should be placed. The wizard step appears for each individual bridge. Below the bridge indication, you can choose between different contact point types. Choosing a different tooth library is also possible. To place the teeth for a bridge, click the selected contact point type of the first tooth, in our case, tooth 3, 4. Once you have set your first contact point, the second contact point for the last tooth will be automatically selected and can be positioned. To change the contact point type, select the new type and click closely to the contact point you want to change. Changing the tooth library is also possible after the model teeth are positioned. To delete all set model teeth, click Delete Bridge. We proceed to the next bridge by clicking Next. The next bridge is for teeth 44 to 45. For this bridge, we start with the last tooth and select the same tooth library as for the previous bridge. Proceed to the next wizard step. In this step, the initially placed model teeth can be fine-tuned. Thus, the step only appears if model teeth were placed before. You can move, rotate, or scale individual teeth or all teeth together. Furthermore, the adjustments can be restricted to certain directions. You can also use the secondary views during tooth position correction. Click Implant Control in the main toolbar and use a focused layout with the Curve Cut and Tangent view. Both views can be moved synchronously. Move the secondary views to the first tooth you want to correct. Use the Correct Placement options to adjust the tooth placement. Adjusting the model teeth in the main view also updates their outline visualization in the secondary views. When you are finished with one tooth, move to the next until you have finished positioning all model teeth. When ready, proceed to the next workflow step. In this step, you define a threshold value for visually separating hard bone areas from softer areas. Areas above the defined value will be displayed in blue, areas below in red. The coloring will help you to avoid positioning implants in areas which may be of insufficient density. In the main view, the clipped CT dataset is shown. To adjust the threshold, set the clip plane to intersect the region where an implant should be placed. You may show the added model teeth to have an orientation for the clip plane positions. At each corresponding clip position, check the selected threshold value. Remember, blue regions should only enclose bone or denser areas. Red areas should enclose softer areas but may also contain bone.
You can also reset the current view and clip planes to their initial value. When ready, proceed to the next workflow step. In this step, you position the implants for each defined implant planning tooth. You can select a tooth in the wizard control. In our case, we start with tooth 4-5. Next, we select an implant library from the list of available libraries. You can mark a library as favorite. It will appear in the favorite section at the beginning of the list. After you have selected an implant library, you select one of its available diameters and lengths. For the selected implant library, compatible stock abutments are also available. However, the selection of an abutment depends also on the defined implant type. Similar to the implant library, you can choose between different available diameters, angles, and heights of the selected abutment library. The implant preview window shows your selections. Hovering over each implant part displays a pop-up window with information. You can place your implant by clicking in the CT dataset in the main view or in one of the secondary views, except the panoramic view. Once you have placed an implant, the curve-depending views are replaced by implant-depending views. The implant axial and implant cross view. The implant axial view moves along to the current implant axis. The implant cross view moves around the implant axis. For a closer view on the implant position, we enlarge the implant cross view. In the implant cross view, you see several outline overlays. The model teeth and jaw scan in green, the abutment in pink, the right nerve canal in blue, and the safety distance in white. The implant is visualized with the threshold coloring of the previous wizard step. Thus, blue implant parts are in bone or denser areas, and red parts are in softer areas. You can move the implant freely within the view or along certain axes, for example, the implant axis. After you finish the movement, the implant cross view updates such that the implant is centered in the view. Click Rotate Implant to rotate the implant around several reference points, for example, its end points or its center. After each rotation, the implant cross view updates its orientation such that the implant axis is aligned to the up direction. You can switch to rotation easily while movement mode is active by pressing the control key. For rotation, the last selected reference point is used. You can also position the implant in all other views, as well as in the main view. You can undo and redo the last implant movements and rotations. Furthermore, you can change your implant setup, for example, the implant library, diameter, or abutment settings. The implant visualization is updated at any time. When the implant safety distance intersects with a nerve canal, a collision is detected. A collision is indicated by a red coloring of the safety distance and the colliding objects in every view. You must resolve the collision first before proceeding to the next tooth via the Next button. The safety distance can be adjusted in the Settings tab by dragging the corresponding slider. However, a safety distance below 1.5 mm should only be used in exceptional cases with particular care. 
In the Settings tab, you can also switch between the implant visualization modes. Natural Texturing colors the implant in Solid, Natural mode from the DICOM control. Solid colors the implant in Yellow. Furthermore, you can change the implant type for each individual tooth by clicking Edit Implant Setup. In the control, the currently selected tooth is colored in red, but you can select any other tooth. You can change the implant type for a selected tooth. If you decide to add a new tooth to implant planning or to remove an implant planning tooth, you can do that in this control too. We now finish the placement for the first implant. When we are finished with positioning the implant, we proceed to the next tooth by clicking Next. Let's place the next implant for tooth 44. We use the same implant library in abutment. If you place one implant too close to another, a collision will also be detected. In this case, the collision is detected if both safety distances intersect each other. In other words, if the distance between two implants is lower than twice the selected safety distance. Let's adjust the second implant to its final position and length. Before we proceed to the next tooth, let's do some measurements. Go to the Tools menu and select the Measurement tool. Here you can choose Distance or Angle Measurement. You can click the Start and End points in the Secondary view or in the Main view. Once you set the points, the measurement value is displayed in the Main view. Already placed measurement points can be moved by dragging them. During movement, the measurement value is always updated. An existing measurement can be used as an annotation, which is permanently associated to scene objects. To convert a measurement into an annotation, click the annotation icon in the measurement tool. You can also add individual annotations by switching to the Add tab in the Annotation Editor. Write an annotation text and click onto the scene object the annotation is associated to. An arrow marker will appear in the main view, which can be adjusted. In the Annotation Editor, you can also add some notes for the current project. Switch to the Project Notes tab and type in your additional notes. In the Notes field, you already find the notes you have entered during project definition. Let's proceed in the workflow and place the last two implants for tooth 3, 4, and 3, 5.
We are finished with the last implant. If you want to change an already positioned implant, you must focus it first. Focusing an implant can be performed in two ways. One way is to select the corresponding tooth from the tooth list. Once an implant is focused, the implant planning views are updated. A newly focused implant can be adjusted regularly, for example, by changing the implant library, length, or position. The second way to focus an implant is to double-click an unfocused implant. Collected information about all placed implants can be found in the implant control. In the control, open the Implant Information tab. For each placed implant, you find relevant information, for example, the library and manufacturer information. Further information can be found in the tab Implant Angles. Here, you have an overview about the angles between the individual implants. Click the tooth number of an implant to highlight its angle to other implants. We are now finished with the implant placement. Before we proceed to the next workflow step, let's introduce the Expert Mode. You switch to Expert Mode by clicking the Expert icon in the main toolbar. In Expert Mode, you have access to all available workflow steps, but also to features not available in Wizard Mode. First, right-click in the main view to open the context menu. Here, you find the individual workflow steps available in the current state. The upcoming workflow step is highlighted. In the context menu, you can also save the current planning state as a scene file. A saved scene contains all planning information and can be loaded to continue the planning later. Saving and loading a scene is only possible in expert mode. The available planning steps can also be found in the Expert Mode toolbar in the lower part of the main view. Only in Expert Mode, you can delete all implants by clicking the corresponding icon. The implants to delete are displayed in the control and highlighted in the main view. Deleting the implants is irreversible. If you want to delete individual implants, hold Control or Shift and click the teeth with implants to delete. Click on Delete Implants to delete only the selected implants. The last relevant feature only available in Expert Mode is adding or removing additional mesh types. As you probably know, you find it in the Tools menu. In the list of available mesh types, you can select a certain mesh type to load. For example, you can load a mesh which can be used as an additional collision object for the placed implants. Let's switch back to wizard mode to proceed with the last workflow step. The last step is generating the output files. You first have to approve the planning with respect to certain safety statements. Check also that you have used the correct CT dataset for the patient you have defined in the project. Once you have confirmed the safety statements, you can start generating the output files by clicking I agree. This may take several seconds. The generated output files consist of the planning report and other files. Let's start with the planning report by clicking Show Report. 
The first page of the report contains general information about the project, for example, patient info and the used dental notation, followed by the table of contents of the report. The next page contains information about the CT dataset and notes that were added during the project definition and planning. This page is followed by the panoramic radiograph and a page with the same image but with implants and defined nerve canals. The implant overview page contains relevant information about the placed implants, for example, tooth numbers, implant library, and abutments. Individual implant parts are distinguished by different colors. The next page contains information about the implant angles and general planning information, for example, the used safety distance. The last pages contain detailed information and cross-sections of each placed implant. The cross-sections start at the center of the implant, depicted with a blue border, and run left and right in fixed step sizes. This is available for every implant. Let's proceed with the other output files. Click Open Project Directory to show the content of the project folder. All generated output files are located in the project folder. They consist of four files. First, the saved scene file, which represents the last planning state before the output is generated. Second, the already explained planning report. Third, an XML file that contains all relevant planning information, for example, implant libraries and positions. This XML file can be used to generate a surgical guide. Fourth, an archive file that contains the aforementioned files and several mesh files. By default, all mesh files are based on the DICOM coordinates. If the CT alignment result was evaluated as acceptable, all meshes are also generated in the JAW scan coordinate system. The mesh files mainly include meshes for all planned implants, their insertion channels, or the meshes of available nerve canals. We are now finished with the planning and proceed to the last wizard step. You have reached the end of the wizard workflow and can decide what to do next. By default, Exoplan will be closed. You can also switch to Expert Mode. Keep in mind that changes of certain planning steps in Expert Mode will delete the output files and you must generate them again. Thank you for watching this video.